Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Model Building on Vacation. So all of my train stuff is in this one box. Inside I've got some track, some tools, two freight car kits, some glue, and a few supplies. I have three different types of glues with me. This is same stuff by Micromark, which is a liquid styrene cement that's good for plastic to plastic joints. This is super glue, which is good for general purpose bonding. And this is canopy glue, which is also a general purpose glue, and it's really good for parts that need to be removable or for clear parts. This is KD Greasem, which is a powdered graphite lubricant. I brought two small boxes of parts. Now I won't need most of this stuff, but this one has some drill bits in it. And this one has some KD bolster washers as well as some miscellaneous screws in case I need them. This is a bulk pack of KD 158 couplers. In case I need them, these are some peel and stick weights. Each segment's a quarter of an ounce. This is a set of jewelers files which come in different shapes and are really useful in certain situations. These are some sanding sticks and various grits which can be useful for sanding hard to reach areas. I brought a bunch of small pieces of sandpaper along with some small pieces of 40,000 styrene to use as sanding blocks. When I cut out these pieces of sandpaper, I write the grit on the back so I can tell what they are. I have three X-Acto knives with me along with some spare blades. This one has a chisel blade in it, which is good for certain types of work. And then these two have regular blades. I keep the sharpest blades in the one with the blue tape on it. And then when this blade starts to get dull, I move it into this other handle and use this for work that doesn't require as much precision. I think that helps to preserve the sharpness of the other blade. This is a set of sprue cutters which are really good for removing small parts from the parts trees without damaging them. These should only be used on plastic or other soft materials. I brought several pin vices with different size drill bits in them. These are some additional drill bits that are a little larger than the ones that I have in the parts box. I have two pairs of needle nose pliers. I probably could have got by with just one, but since they're small I figured why not just throw it in. This is a set of sprung tweezers which is really good for holding small parts. This is a model railroad reference rule, which is also good as a straight edge if you need to cut something. I brought a piece of track and a KD coupler height gauge so I can make sure that the coupler height is right on the cars. This is an NMRA standards gauge so I can check the wheel gauge to make sure it's right. And finally, these are my two freight car kits. I have a branch line Berwick box car and a Proto 2000 tank car. So I don't know that I'll get through both of these kits or even one of them, but that's not really the point. I just want to have some fun. Also, I didn't bring any aftermarket details or paint. If these cars need any additional parts, or if they need any painting or weathering, that'll have to wait till later. So let's see what's in here. Got the Canadian Pacific boxcar body, some tissue paper, some parts, wheels and trucks, and some details. And what's in here? We got some instructions. And the car roof and the frame. And a couple large nuts that are for weight. So these branch line kits are a pretty straightforward build, so I'm just going to follow the instructions. The instructions say to start with the end details, so I'll start by cutting some parts out. This is where the sprue cutters come in really handy. I'll snip the small parts off without damaging anything. Although you still have to be careful with really delicate parts that are thin like these. Looks like one of the ladders is a little messed up so I'll have to be really careful with it. Even these put a little stress on the parts so you have to be real gentle with these things like ladders that have very thin cross sections. Needle nose pliers can be good for placing really small parts. These are the supports for the crossover platform. I'll secure it with a little liquid styrene cement. A little flash on the tack board, so I'll clean that with a file. The tack boards have little pins on the back that fit into holes in the ends of the car, but they're a little bit too small. I think it's actually the thickness of the paint that it interferes. So I'm just going to take my less good X-Acto knife and spin it around in the holes to make them just slightly bigger. Now it fits. The messed up ladder has a little flash on the rungs, so I'm going to use my sharper knife. 
try to trim that off. The ladder also has little pins in it that fit into holes in the car, but they're a little small, just like the tack boards were. So I'm using a number 76 drill bit to open them up a little. And try to coax this back together very carefully and see if I can fix the ladder on the car. The top ladder rung on one side was broken in half, but I managed to coax it back together. I'm going to use a little liquid styrene cement to secure it. Not a super strong bond, but since it's right on the end of the car, I think it should hold up okay. I finished gluing on the end details. The only thing I did that's different than the instructions is I left off the crossover platforms because when I get home, I have some photo etched ones that I'd rather use. The instructions suggest putting a small amount of CA glue on the ends of the wire grab irons before trying to insert them in the car. I found that they fit without pre-drilling, which is really nice. So now I have all the grab irons glued on. As you can see, they do stick out a little bit. That's normal. I use my sprue cutters to separate the underframe from the parts tree. There's a really small leftover piece of plastic on the edge of the coupler box lid in this little groove that it has around the side. So I'm just going to file that off real quick. So I put a KD-158 into the coupler box and the lid is supposed to fit on without needing glue. So let's see. So I pried this back off because I think there's a little too much paint around this pin that holds the thing together. So I'm just going to file it off a little bit. It's in there a little better now. I'm use a little bit of Katie Greasem, which is a powdered graphite lubricant, to make sure that the coupler moves freely. This is one of those coupler box designs that isn't going to be serviceable once the car is put together, which I don't really care for, but that's the way it's made, so I'm just going to go with it. It said glue isn't required, but I'm going to just tack glue it with some liquid styrene cement to make sure these things don't pop open later. Because the lids are on top, they're going to be sandwiched between the underframe and the car body, so there really is no way to change the couplers once the car is assembled. So even with sprue cutters, you have to be really careful with little delicate parts like this. The entire brake rigging assembly is one big plastic part, and these pieces are really thin. I try to start on the ends and cut things in such a way that it puts as little stress on the parts as possible. You know, if you start in the middle, it can make these little pieces bow. So if they're free on one end, then I think they have less of a tendency to break. We'll see if I can get through this entire thing without breaking something. Ooh, that's a hard one. It's not going to fit in there. Sometimes you can't help but go in between pieces because there's just no other way to do it. Sprue cutters leave a pretty clean cut, but I'm still going to use the knife to very carefully shave off some little bits of excess plastic on these things. You want to use the sharp blade for this. There are pins on the bottom of the brake piping that fit into holes on the underframe. And this has to go in in the right orientation. I'm going to open up a couple of the holes with my knife just because the paint thickness has been a problem in other places. With the holes reamed out, I was able to put everything together. I'm just going to secure it with some liquid styrene cement. The ends of the brake rods actually fit into little holes in the underframe. I'll secure those as well. Now it's time to put the entire underframe assembly on the car. And there are two little supports under here with holes in them. And those correspond to the position of the triple valve in the air reservoir. Managed to get everything in there. Now, you could glue the underframe or you could leave it removable. I think I'm going to leave mine removable and see how that goes, just in case I ever have to change the couplers for some reason. So looking at these, I'm not sure I want to use them. The axles are plastic and it looks like the end of this one is already a little bit chewed up. And these don't look like the greatest wheels anyway, so I think I'm going to wait till I get home and put some better wheels on it. So now I'm home, and I didn't quite get finished with the box car, but that's okay. I'm going to finish it here, and I'll save the tank car for another time. Um, as often seems to be the case on vacation, I didn't end up having as much time to do this kind of thing as I was hoping for. 
Um, some things kind of went different than we were expecting and a couple things happened, but overall we still had a good time and I think it was a good trip. Um, so one of the cool things about being home is that I now have better lighting and also I have access to all of the parts that I didn't bring with me on vacation. So the kit comes with AccuRail trucks, which are pretty good. So I found these wheels in my stash of parts and unfortunately I don't know who made them because they weren't in a box, but they do have the correct 33 inch scale diameter and they also have the semi-fine scale tread profile, which I like. They also fit in the trucks and they spin pretty freely. So I think this should be a nice free rolling car. So before I put the trucks on the car, I'm going to attach the brake fulcrum. So that'll be a little hard to access with the wheels on. I'll attach the trucks using the screws that came with the kit. So let's see where we're at. The A end is just a little high. The B end is quite a bit high. So to lower the car, you typically will have to remove some material either here on the bolster area of the car itself or on the truck. Now this car has a little uh, round spindle thing that comes up. It's going to make it really difficult to try to shave this down. So I think I'm going to have to work down here. A flat file works well for this kind of job. I just need to file this down until the car's at the right height. One thing that's important when filing a truck bolster is you want to make sure to keep it as level as possible so that you don't make the car start to tilt to one side or the other. Well, that looks pretty good. The BN looks good too. So when setting up a car, it's important to tighten one truck so that it will pivot, but it won't rock side to side. So you can see when I try to rock it, the whole car body's moving with me. The truck on the other end will rock. So this creates a three point suspension and that will keep the car from wobbling and it'll also allow it to negotiate track that's slightly uneven. So usually aftermarket wheels don't have issues, but I'm going to check the gauge anyway. These look fine. So the hex nuts that they give you for weights are designed to fit over these round rings that are molded into the car floor. Since I'm home and I have more options for adhesives, I'm going to attach the nuts with some clear silicone. The main thing with these is just to make sure that they're centered so that the car won't lean. According to the NMRA, a car that's this long should weigh about four and a half ounces. And it's right about there. It says 4.6. So I think we're good. I need to spread the car sides just a little bit to get the roof on. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Looks like it should fit without glue, which is good. So if I ever need to re-glue those weights, I'll be able to get in there. The silicone takes about a day to cure, so I'm going to leave this car overnight before I finish the final details. This is Plano Part 132, which are crossover platforms that I want to use on the boxcar. These are pretty close in size to the plastic parts that came with the car, but I think they look a lot better. So the Plano part actually has several of these, and there's a BN crossover platform, which has a little hole in it for the brake chain. And then there's the AN crossover platform, which is plain. And then there's also these supports. Now, since this car already has supports, I'm not going to use the supports. I'm just going to use the platform itself. I'm using some shears that are specifically designed to cut out photo etched parts. I'll just nip these off. I'm holding the part tightly in some needle nose pliers while I file off these little bits of metal that are left over. This is so I don't bend the part itself. On the B end, I'm also going to cut this little bar that goes across the hole for the brake chain. Otherwise, I would never be able to get this on the car. I put the crossover platforms on some masking tape and took them outside and airbrushed them with a red that seems pretty close to the color on the car body. I'm using a piece of scrap wire as an applicator to put some CA glue on the crossover platform supports. I'm using my fingers to put these on because I'm afraid the pliers might scratch the paint. The see-through platforms look a lot better than the ones that came with the car kit. Use the sprue cutters to cut out the stirrups. Stirrups are a little difficult to put on. I got them in the holes and then I'll secure them with some liquid styrene cement. So unfortunately I broke one of the stirrups. The closest replacement I have is Detail Associates Part 6416. Here's the replacement stirrup and it looks pretty good other than the color, so I'll have to paint it later. I also had to use CA to glue it since it's not a styrene plastic. This is High Tech Details Part 6039 
These are air hoses with brackets. And they look similar to the ones that came with the car, but these are rubber and they should be a lot more durable. I've temporarily removed one of the trucks and I'm drilling a pair of holes right near the draft gearbox. So these hoses have a mounting bracket with a little nub on it and then this other little piece that sticks up and these go in the two holes. Coaxing these into position can be a little tricky. When I'm happy with where they are, I'll use a little CA to secure them. Even though these are flexible enough and they probably won't get hung up on anything, I like to make sure that the rubber hose doesn't hang down any farther than the coupler trip pin. So I did manage to find a couple of photographs of these cars. Um, unfortunately, none from the 90s, but um, I did notice that the uncoupling levers that are on the real cars are slightly different than these. I'm going to make my own uncoupling levers to approximate what I see in the photos. I'm going to start with some 2206 eye bolts from Detail Associates. I'm going to drill out the holes in the existing uncoupling lever brackets. I used some CA to glue an eye bolt into each of the uncoupling lever brackets. I'm using some needle nose pliers to bend some 12 thousandths phosphor bronze wire into the shape of an uncoupling lever. So I ended up with two pieces of wire that look like this. So one end of the lever goes through the eye bolt and the other one is secured with a drop of CA on the bottom of the draft gear box. I think once they're painted, I think it should look pretty good. So it could use a little paint touch up and some weathering, but other than that, my mostly built on vacation boxcar is now finished. Chances are you already have a lot of stuff to pack. Try to keep your modeling supplies at a minimum, bringing just what you need. If you can fit it all into a single container, so much the better. You're on vacation, so keep your goals flexible. It's okay not to finish things. This kind of modeling is meant to be fun. Try to enjoy the time spent without fixating on completion. If you're somewhere and you have the opportunity to spend time with your loved ones and see something new, do that. The models can wait. You can always finish them at home. And so there you have it. Just because you're on vacation and away from home doesn't mean you can't still have a little fun with trains if you want to. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.